Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what is geometric topology. Today I would like to do some two-dimensional fact, so two-dimensional uh, surfaces. So surfaces by definition are two-dimensional surface. We'll see what it is. It's a two-dimensional manifold, and it's actually very nice, so you can classify them nicely. So today I would just like to explain kind of the topological definition, um, which gets a bit painful as we will see. There are some technicalities involved that are a little bit annoying. Um, although the main idea is pretty, pretty beautiful and straight, kind of really pretty beautiful, um, not straightforward, but pretty beautiful. Um, and yeah, so next time I will show you a combinatorial definition, which is also pretty beautiful, uh, but kind of falls a little bit out of the blue, but it's somehow the better notion in some sense. But we won't see that today. Today, just kind of topology, and we want to talk about spheres and friends. We'll see what that means. Um, okay, so basically, this is a setup. So here are the two main examples of the surface, a swim ring and your pair of pens. Um, so what is a surface? A surface, well, strictly speaking, there will be a surface without boundary, and there will be a surface with boundary. And basically, the, def the, the difference is the following. On a surface without boundary, um, here, like in the torus case, every point has a neighborhood, which is a disk. No matter where I draw my point, you have a neighborhood, which is a disk. I run a mathematical demonstration in a second for you. Um, this is really kind of a really flat space. Here it's a point with a disk and so on. Now, this was a bad disk. But anyway, so this was our boundary, uh, without boundary. Uh, and this has boundary. And it's kind of the same idea. So every point has... Uh, neighborhood, which is a disk. So the, the patch on your uh, genes here is such a disk for a certain point on, on the patch. Um, but not quite all points have disks as neighborhoods. Some points here along the boundary, here's a boundary, here's a boundary, and here's a boundary. So three boundary components, uh, exactly the parts where you enter or exit or whatever, the uh, pair of pens, they have, well, let me try to draw it. They look more like this. They have some kind of half disks. Uh, right, so half disks as boundary, which is kind of the zoomed in picture down here. So everywhere else you have disks, um, but along the boundary you have half disks. And that's kind of the difference. So surface without boundary, everything has disks. Surface with boundary, it's either a disk or with half disks. And that's that's about it. Um, so let's have a look at the surface without boundary. So here uh, looks like a plane. So we can move around in the plane, the little point. Ah, it's not quite a plane. I jump over, as you can see, there's a non-continuous movement involved. If I go to here, bash, I jump over. And it's two-dimensional, so I have two ways to walk around on the plane. And again, I jump over here, bash. So it's not quite the plane, that's a bit strange. But certainly the plane locally looks like a disk. So maybe let me go a little bit more into the middle. Uh, clearly, this little point here has a neighborhood, which is a disk. You can actually see it. It's a blue rectangle. Maybe it'll make it a little bit smaller, such that you don't include the boundary because you have this funny behavior along the boundary. Anyway, so this, as you can see here, are actually kind of um, angles. You wonder why on Earth do I want to parameterize uh, a very flat surface using angles? I mean, I can, I only need two parameters. It's a two dimensional space, but it's a bit strange. And you also see this kind of topping over effect uh, bash, which is also a bit strange. And the point is, this is just a very strange or a, a certain kind of zoomed in version of a torus. And if I vary this here, you see what actually happens. So actually the two sides are identified and that's why we can walk around right here. Now it makes sense that we walk around. It looks a little bit like a cylinder. Um, and actually, the other sides are also identified, and this is actually a torus. And the two angles that we see here are actually going around the little circles that you see here. So really just around. And now it makes perfect sense why we have this jumping effect. Uh, I go around like this. Maybe I can get a better angle here. Um, so I can go around like this, right? So into the hole, or I can go around in the other direction. Very good. And these are the two angles, and it's a two-dimensional surface, and they parameterize the surface. But locally, it really is just flat. And this is a picture we see locally. So this is exactly what we like to see as a surface without boundary. Every point locally has a neighborhood that is this. And now you can play the same game with your pair of pens, and you will realize that it's almost a surface without boundary. It has three boundary components because you have this half-disc picture here uh, sticking around. Okay, so that's 
the definition, not quite. There is some technical nonsense involved, but basically that's what we know need to know about surfaces. Surfaces without boundary and surfaces with boundary. The difference is disks or half disks. Um, and here are some more examples of surfaces, and they are all homeomorphic. And that's kind of the point here. So otherwise, well, here these are clearly surfaces, right? I can draw my little disks everywhere, no problem at all. And all of them have boundary because again, here at the boundary, I will draw a half disk, um, as you can see, uh, same, same, same here, you would draw a half disk. And there's just one boundary component. So all of them are actually homeomorphic to a circle, uh, a filled in circle. And, but anyway, so the point is listing just all surfaces, as I just listed very few here, uh, the coordinate planes, the simplex, a little bit of a curvy type, strange, I have no idea what kind of shape that is, shaped surface. Um, and there are already infinitely many rectangles. So I could uh, use different angles here or scalings or whatever. So just listing them is pretty much hopeless. But what we should do and what we will do is we try to list them up to homeomorphism. So for example, all of these are just the same. All of these are just the circle, uh, which cuts down the number of possibilities drastically. And the goal is, and it's not quite clear now whether this is really ambitious and hopeless, turns out has a nice answer, is that we would like to classify surfaces up to uh, equivalence. And this title is completely nonsense. It was copied from a previous slide and I forgot to change it. Uh, my bad. Anyway, so let's come back to the slide. So this goal is very ambitious, or, or not, we can't tell, to classify surfaces up to homeomorphism, because that's kind of the correct notion in topology anyway. And it definitely cuts down the problem quite a lot. Uh, from this point of view, it's not clear whether this is has a hope, still hopeless answer, like there's still way too many of them. Uh, even up to homeomorphism, or maybe everything collapses and nothing actually remains, could, or everything in between. And the answer is it will be everything in between, but we can't see that right now. It takes us a while to do it, actually. Uh, here are more surfaces, uh, all without boundary. So the soccer ball is a surface, it's called a sphere, and <laughs> clearly every point has a neighborhood here, like this hexagon. Every point has a neighborhood that is a disk, we had the torus. Uh, we have way more complicated surfaces, which actually kind of comes back to this point, whether this is actually ambitious or not, whether we have actually any chance to do it. So those two, so this is a projective plane. So RP2, is, this is called RP2. I'll go to this in a second. And this one is the Klein bottle, or let's say an immersion in three space of the Klein bottle. So the Klein bottle is a surface that you just simply can't draw in three space, you need four space. Same for the RP2, you need four space to actually illustrate it, but it's still a surface. So uh, ignoring that it intersects itself here, for example, every point has a little neighborhood, which is just a, just a disk. Uh, it's just a very strange surface. And this one is even worse. It's really hard to imagine. So what you do is you take the soccer ball and you identify opposite points, which means it's still locally, you have a little disk. It's just repeated down here again. But it's still locally just a just a little disk. Uh, but for example, just naively, I have no idea whether these two spaces are actually homeomorphic or not. Uh, God knows, they're not. Um, but a priori, we just can't decide, right? It's really unclear. This one could be actually homeomorphic to uh, the sphere. Who knows? Uh, or this one is a torus. Who knows? Um, so my point here is there are quite a few surfaces. This condition of having a locally a disk is somehow very weak. Um, you can write down very, very strange examples, very natural examples, a pair of pens, a soccer ball, a swim ring. I would have really strange examples here that we will see uh, late throughout the ne next few videos here. So um, if you don't understand them right now, that's perfectly fine. They are strange examples. That's the whole point here. And what we really need in order to go ahead is we need a way to list surfaces efficiently. Right? So just writing down a few of them and wonder whether they are equivalent just doesn't get it anywhere. Um, it already gets too complicated for those four surfaces. I would guess naively that those two are not equivalent, but at this stage, I even can't tell. It could be that there is some really strange homeomorphism, some really strange map from the torus to the sphere that makes it work. And for the other two spaces, I, I literally can't tell. They're just too complicated for me. Uh, but we'll see that actually all of them are different. So all of them are different spaces. And roughly speaking, there are no other surfaces, but uh, we'll see what that actually means.
Okay, so here's a correct definition or whatever. The one that I'm using in these videos, at least, is maybe not the correct definition, can't be wrong. So um, anyway, uh, so a closed surface and a surface with boundary. And closed is saying it has no boundary, but it's also referring to it as compact. Whatever that is, it's not so important. Uh, but the point is we have this neighborhood, which is a disk. Or we have this neighborhood, which is a half disk. And then there's this annoying technical assumption the uh, following. So you don't want it to be non-empty, right? So the condition to every point is in a, equivalent to a disk. It's certainly true for something non-empty, but that, that's we just don't want it to be empty. So my services are always non-empty. And then there's a stupid condition on how big it is that I'm going to ignore, and another condition on the topology itself. So it turns out that you really need to force host off. There's a I won't discuss an example, it's a little bit strange guess of too far off the track but a, a link down down in the description uh, a non house of manifold so what would happen if you would drop the house of condition so you really need those technical assumptions but i really would it's not so important you can actually forget them i just need to list them to be complete the point is this open disk definition and the examples we have seen uh, without boundary and with boundary turns out that these are all equivalent here um, and here we, those two are equivalent and this one is its own. But basically that's what it is. Without boundary, there are spheres, tori, and those spaces. And with boundary, there are kind of those disk-like type objects. Um, that's what it is. And let's get a pretty cool definition and we would like to classify them. Be careful here, here are some non-examples. So it really looks like here, every point has a neighborhood that is a disk and same here. But for example, upstairs, this point, here has no disk as a neighborhood. So this is called a pinch torus. It's really just to take your swim ring and you pinch it together at one point. So this is not a surface. And for very same reasons, this is not a surface because here, this little point around the book sheet has a funny neighborhood, which goes somewhere in three directions. And it's also not a circle anymore. So this is also not uh, a surface. Also, it looks two dimensional, right? Keep in mind, that not every two-dimensional object is a surface. A surface is a more restrictive notion, where really every point has a neighborhood um, which is isomorphic to a disk. And if you want to like to include those and those spaces as two-dimensional objects, they're totally fine two-dimensional objects, right? They're clearly two-dimensional objects. This is kind of a, a book with three pages. And uh, this is just a pinched uh, swim ring. And then you need to use some more technical language and some kind of CW complex or something, uh, cell complex, and you can include them. But then classification gets harder. So we really restrict to the cases that are kind of loose in a certain sense. Don't take that too literally. And every point has a neighborhood, which is a disk, or for the boundary, actually a half disk. Anyway, so surfaces, main objects under study in the beginnings of topology would be really good. So there will be some combinatorial surfaces in the next time, and then we will classify them. And it's, it's really, really cool. Um, but it's a restricted notion. So we are not studying all two-dimensional spaces. We're kind of studying a tiny, teeny, weeny bit of the two-dimensional spaces. But this restriction is necessary for the problem not to be get completely out of hand. So what you usually do in mathematics is you restrict the problem until it's still rich enough but uh, doable. So if you would like to classify something like all uh, cell complexes of dimension two, oof, hi, ah, good luck, that's not so easy. Already for dimension two, that's not so easy. Um, and there was those technical conditions, for example, the Hausdorff condition that you really need to get, off, get rid of unwanted examples. You can really write down very strange two-dimensional spaces if you don't have the Hausdorff condition. Um, anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and I also hope to see you next time.